Hey everybody, figured I would uh, make a little update video on this. Getting ready for a sick week and um, got everything all done with the car. It's basically just sitting here waiting, put a couple hundred miles on it. Street drive's good. We're ready to run in 235 class. It's still got the street tires on it uh, and it's still filthy. But um, I got a bunch of questions about some stuff. Uh, so I figured I would kind of go over what we got going on. So... Um, it's a 540 inch big block Chevrolet, single 118 millimeter from Force Inductions. Um, this is, I got a lot of questions about this. This is a little panel filter. So Matt at Performance Fab uh, made this for me, right? So the idea is, is normally there's a little, there's a pipe that sits here and comes all the way up to the front end. Um, but the idea here is, is as you're driving down the road, you leave this in and then, of course, it's really tight. I didn't want it to get sucked in. But uh, then when you're gonna race it, you just you know slide it out and boom, there's the turbo. So you just slide this thing back in and uh, you know, you're good to go. Uh, you're ready to go back to driving down the road. So. Um, I wanted to be able to make the transition from street to race and race to street as easy as possible. So this was one of the first things. The other thing is, um, it's a little different with my car. Some other people just have a, uh, have a pulley up here that drives the, uh, fuel pump cable, but, um, mine uses an oil pump, an external oil pump from Moroso, and then it has a, uh, cable driven off the back of it. Well, the cable's buried down in there and it's a pain to get to so um, what I came up with was if you come to the back of the car it's pretty simple we'll go underneath here so you can look it's a uh, pretty easy to just disconnect it right from the pump and then you take the cable out of the sleeve like the covering just slide it back so it disengages from the uh, from the back of the oil pump and uh, so it doesn't spin when we're when we're driving down the road uh, on pump gas. So there's two separate fuel cells completely in this car. Um, over under here, I'll kind of show you. This is just a drain for the pump gas tank. This tank for pump gas, uh, it's kind of hard to see. So this is the deep section here is all methanol, right? So this holds a uh, thing like seven and a half gallons. And then this large section here, all over here and over there, that's all pump gas. So um, they're two completely separated systems. If the car's got a little bit too much uh, rear, too much fuel in it, we can drain it out before we make a pass, just pump gas out of it. But we don't ever have to touch the methanol tank. So, you know, if you put eight gallons of methanol in the car and um, go make a pass or whatever and... Uh, and you, you know, you've got like say four gallons left, it doesn't matter, it can just sit in there until we're ready to race the next day. Um, and then, you know, pump gas, we made it pretty easy to just drain out as, as easy as you can. So I use those Earl's uh, Ultra Pro ball valves. Uh, they work pretty good, except for the fact that they can, you know, let's see this little, little, little notch here. They can uh, come on, on uh, you know, unlocked from here. So when you open this, it may not actually open it. So, you know, just be mindful of that. Um, as far as the methanol system, we've got the fuel feed line from the tank here. It goes up and over this hitch and then into the pump, out of the pump and goes, you know, up into the engine bay. There's a system one filter right there. This guy right here, that's my fuel filter. Um, as far as the fuel, the pump gas setup, there's a, I'll try to zoom in little Corvette regulator. Um, my buddy Josh Tonsky, who works on a lot of uh, late model Chevrolets, told me about this thing. I didn't even know they were a thing, but it works really good. It regulates it right at, uh, I think right around like 60 something, 60 PSI. So works great for, uh, for pump gas. Um, the other thing we did to make this a little easier, um, you know, at, over the years I've watched people you know, follow this, you know, closely. Watch people, they always wind up talking about how they, you know, they change the suspension settings and then they, or maybe they change shocks when they're going on the road or whatever. I'm not doing all that. 
So um, what we did is we put, I made a video on this before, but we put um, airbags right there. So there's little airbags right there. Um, they sit, they're bolted to the, uh, to the chassis and not bolted to the rear end housing. So um, what that means is when you air up the bags, it raises the car and makes the, bo the bottom of the, you know, the, the back end of the car stiffer. Um, and then uh, when you're racing the car, you let the air pressure out of the bags and the car, this car extends. And what, what we mean by that is it separates. So like it's trying to drive the tire downward, but the concrete doesn't move. So the back end of the car like lifts up. So as it's driving the tire down, the back end of the car is growing. It's getting away from that airbag and the airbag is not attached to the rear end housing. So the airbag doesn't actually stop us from being able to race the car. So I don't have to do anything with it except for throw this little valve right here and, um, you know, get pressure off of it. So um, that's all I do for suspension. That's it. Uh, it works pretty well. And then there's a, uh, you know, seven-way trailer plug back here. Backup camera. I'll go over that in a minute. Um, you know, I, like an idiot, I put a huge hitch on it. I didn't need to, but whatever. So here's the top side. Methanol tank. Um, there's a fuel level center here. This is refilled methanol. Then this is the pump gas setup. So this is a um, Holly uh, dual wall barrel 255 fuel pump drop-in module. Um, it's got the feed and return, and the return line is just coming back from that uh, oh, that Corvette regulator. So uh, the return's just going right back in here, but the return's only, you know, whatever, four feet long. Uh, and then there's also a, uh, a fuel level center here. I put bulkheads down here just to pass the uh, the feed and the return line through the carbon to get it up underneath the car or up, you know, under the uh, on top of the rear end housing. So, all right, uh, we've got a little backup camera and right there, bolted it to my license plate. Um, and that is attached to uh, this thing, which my fiance bought for me for Christmas. It's pretty awesome. So what it is, is it's a, uh, like a 10 inch, um, Android head unit, basically. So, uh, there you go. So this is like the standard head unit, um, time, all this stuff. You can download apps to it. It's got Sirius XM in it, a regular radio, yada, yada, YouTube. Um, it's pretty cool. And I like it cause it's just like my Ford truck now. So, um, Music there on one side, you know, navigation there on the other side. Um, it, uh, you know, then we can we can search for stuff. Just whatever's in your phone, it'll you know go up on there. So works out pretty good. Something else I did, um, and I thought that this was um, it took a little bit of figuring out, but you know, some of you guys are probably going to listen to me and say, "Oh, no, it's easy." I was unaware of this. Um, my laptop uses a USB-C cord to charge right so if you find a pd right i think it's a pd 65 watt um little power adapter there for USB C, this thing will charge my laptop so not only can we charge my phone and uh, my buddy's phone and whatever else we got you can also charge a laptop going down the road i like that it's pretty slick big fan of that um there's some bulkheads here these are for the Holly Dominator, the Smart Wire, the Profiler, and the VPS. So if I need to plug in any of that stuff, it's right there. Just all uses one cord. Um, and then there's, I put speakers back here. Uh, there we go. So nothing fancy, but they work pretty well. Nice and loud. You can hear them. Um, made by Pile. Got them off Amazon. Nothing, again, nothing fancy. So, but they, uh, they were light and they worked. So uh, another big change I made was I switched over to a, and I did this kind of quick and dirty, so don't judge me here, um, full spectrum power battery. So this is a P-Motive 2000. Um, I'll do a, uh, I'm going to do a video on that battery, but that thing is a beast. Um, car cranks over faster. Um, it 
I mean, everything about it is fantastic. A lot more reserve capacity uh, than my previous lithium battery. It weighs about four pounds more than the previous lithium battery, but for the gain that you have from it, there's 2,000 cranking amps out of this thing, so it is right there. So, 2,000 cranking amps. Um, the other cool thing about this thing is uh, it comes with a, you know, you can get a billet mount already, and uh, you can also... I have figured out the perfect alternator for it. Um, we'll be selling a whole package. Uh, these are PowerMaster alternators, but this is not a adjustable regulator alternator. These come right from PowerMaster for me, set up the way I want them. Uh, we're gonna sell a whole little package, but it comes with the battery, the charger, and the alternator, um, a couple other little things here and there. So that's for a different video. Um, what else we do? We did, uh, I posted up on, uh, Facebook the other day asking if anybody had any um, direct experience with uh, ceramic coating headers in the turbo kit. Well, there was two reasons behind the move to do this. One, I, as pretty as all that stainless is with all the different colors, it looked fantastic. Um, once it got some road grime on it, it looked terrible. Uh, two, if there was a chance that we had any type of uh, cooling effect or for ceramic, coating the header it was worth a shot and we did um, I cannot say a hundred percent directly that if it is keeping underhood temps down but I can say that I can change spark plugs a heck of a lot faster now than I could before so that's enough of a benefit in my in my mind um, to uh, to justify the cost uh, if you're local to uh, Greenville South Carolina um, my man Jake Tinsley did it fantastic job at Cerakote I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's like some super high heat Cerakote stuff. Came out awesome. I mean, he did a killer job. Um, so this stuff here's got about, I don't know, 150 miles on it or something and still looks good. Uh, the other thing we did, so we needed air to get to the bumper. And um, this was a tough one for me, but I tried everything under the sun before I did this. And the only solution was to cut the hole. So uh, what I did was we took me and, uh, and and my employee Justin, who's fantastic. If you bring a car here to get wired, you'll meet him. Um, but uh, what we did is we used a uh, a big roll of tape to get a radius, and then um, just cut it. And it looked terrible because I cut it like on the floor with a body saw in like four minutes. Um, and we went on to well, we went down the road and like immediately boom it's keeping it cool right um or keeping it cooler um so i went on to send cut send and drew these and um i had them in like about a week and pretty reasonable price and then i also had a uh, jake over at tinsley's custom coatings and easily uh powder coat these as well then the whole bottom of this bumper is open down here like through here it's normally open um so what was going on was you'd go down the road and a lot of air was going down underneath of the radiator because as you can see the radiator goes way up there um so we were trying to funnel the air that had like force the air to go into the radiator so uh what what i did was this past weekend i went out for a drive with this thing and i swung by um uh, matt over at performance fab in roebuck um and he just cut me out a piece of aluminum and uh, we basically just made a floor for it um, and then, you know, attached it to this flange. Um, took him about 45 minutes and it immediately made that hole look so much better because now it just looks like a big black hole as opposed to what we had before. So the idea is to get the air through the hole, right? We want to go through the hole and then we want to go through the radiator. We don't want to go through the hole and then down under here. Um, then the other side of it is, is that this panel here, I have it removed at the moment, uh, or removable, I should say, at the moment. But this panel here um, sticks on the top of the radiator and tries to keep the air that comes up from the bottom down here or from in through the grill going through the radiator as opposed to going up and over the radiator. So you're probably thinking, man, there's no way it just goes up and over the radiator. Air does some crazy stuff. I don't have a wind tunnel, but I got a pretty serious fan and uh, some streamers and you'd be blown away with you look at how wind or how air moves uh, pretty interesting so um, this helped that bottom panel helped the hole helped um, the whole nine yards it all helped 
So now the car going on the road, the other day it was like 55 outside. So uh, it's not really a true test, but um, at 55 degrees, this thing was running. If I kicked the fans on at 160, uh, it would pull it down to 148, shut the fans off and then go again. So um, overall, getting air to the radiator is number one. Um, but also directing the air to the radiator is a big deal, right? So just having a free air there is one thing, but the air will go all over the place. It's, it's pretty wild. Uh, what else we do? We got, um, oh, so the other cool thing, right? Here we are. We're in park. If I take the shifter, boom, reverse camera. So anytime you shove it in reverse, it uh, pops the camera on. So we also went to the um, Motion Raceworks operator shifter for a three-speed clean neutral. Uh, I will tell you this. I like this shifter more than any of the other shifters, and I work on cars that come with all the other shifters. I had a PPP shifter before this. Um, I do like this shifter a lot. So there's a couple of reasons why I like this shifter. One, it is a good positive detent when the air hits it, okay? Two, it is no buttons to press up here, right? It's all in this handle, right? So it's all in this handle. So it's true like one hand operation. Um, for some reason, my fiance could not drive my car with the thumb pushing, you know, pushing this thumb button. She could not figure that out. Everybody seems to have a, a problem with pushing that little thumb button that, that a lot of the other shifters have up here, right? Um, this nice and smooth works great very happy with it so i just adapted their tube mount to my uh existing tube that i had welded to the chair that mat welded to the chassis we're good to go uh, i'm waiting for them to because this is a rear exit i'm waiting for them to make a mount for a button back here but on the other side for my little push to talk button so um but whatever i'll be done shortly uh, this car is full of motion race work stuff. Um, another thing, uh, it's not like super extravagant or exciting, but the steering wheel hook for motion race works is nice. And the reason why is because you see that lip right there, right there, the steering wheel isn't going to just fall off. Right. So, um, my old one, I don't know who made it. I think it was like Joe was racing or something. It had like this tiny little hook when you set it up there and you, you know what I mean? Like you hook it, um, you gotta get out of the car and it would sometimes just fall off and it pissed me off. So switch over to the motion one, a lot happier with that. Um, other than that, that's really it. So we've been, um, we went out testing on the 235s and uh, we've been, we went, well, we came off the trailer and went a 118 60 foot and then um, oh, my GPS speed's like tweaking out. Um, anyway, we went like 118, 60 foot. Um, and I said, man, that's too fast to the 60 foot for this little tire. Uh, couldn't tell if we were actually going to have that type of a racetrack when we go to sick week. So, um, backed it off, wound up going, uh, off the trailer. We went 118 and then 475 or something like that, uh, at 152 or four or something. Um, and then uh, we I spent uh, most of the follow, most of the rest of the day trying to slow the car down in the uh, first sixty foot. Got it to slow down to like a one twenty five very consistently uh, without having to do anything too too crazy, and um, just rolled a little bit of power in it. Uh, went a string of you know bottom four seventies. Um, then we got after it and um, we did go forties on the tire, but uh, that's gonna be that's gonna that's not gonna ever really be something that. Um, we chase. So, uh, the plan here is to go to sick week and survive it. Right. So that's the whole goal. Uh, last year didn't work out too well. Uh, largely in part because of, um, because uh, of an engine failure. Um, but I have a new engine builder. It's fantastic. I'm very happy with dealing with them. Their name is right there. Um, power racing engines, Spartanburg, South Carolina. If you want a big block Chevrolet, call them up. They pretty much have them like sitting on the shelf. Uh, pretty wild. Scott's got just about everything you could need for a big block Chevrolet. Um, but the last year's debacle um, shouldn't happen, hopefully, right? So uh, anyway, we'll see everybody down in Florida. Um, hopefully we can... My hope here is to put together a 
average that is something because if I have an average of all five days, that means we made it all five days. Uh, the goal is literally just to survive it. I don't really, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, you got a car that'll go 440s on my 235 tire. Why wouldn't you try to go 440s? Racing this car ain't going to be what kills this thing. It's the street driving and, you know, just don't know, uh, don't know where we're going to be, you know? So I've got a couple hundred miles on it. It's been fantastic so far. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, um, once we unload this thing out of the trailer in Florida, that if it doesn't decide to just say no, then you got to go home early. So, uh, fingers crossed. Um, hopefully we make it through the week. Uh, I'm going to make another little video, uh, on my, the trailer. Cause it seemed like last year when I did that, a ton of people were actually interested in all the different ideas I had for a trailer. Uh, the one addition to the trailer is this, uh, scooter that Laura got me, um, if y'all haven't met me, I'm about 290 pounds and my old scooter sucked and this thing's a beast. So this is going in the trailer because, um, well, I walk if you don't have to, you know, um, anyway, all right. Thanks for checking it out. And, uh, hopefully we see you guys down at sick week. If you're coming, see you.